All right, sound check. Hopefully everybody can hear me. If you can't hear me, you let me know because it would be really tragic, right? Do this whole thing and then nobody could hear a word that I said. So we're going to start. I'm Debbie Davis. If you haven't met me before or seen me before, this is what Debbie Davis said. So if you want to hear what I said, here's a place to hear it, right? Okay, so I tried to do a video a few weeks ago on the four different courts that we have in St. Joseph County. Super frustrating because it's been trying to load for two and a half weeks, I think. So uh, I decided I would just scrap that idea and go live and let everybody know the information. I mean, I never do anything off a script, so it's going to be a little bit different than what I did. I hope you like my background, too like that. Oh, kind of creepy. Um, so let's get started. There are four courts in St. Joseph County. Now, there are a different number of courts in different counties. Um, ours has a split district court. So we actually have two elected district court judges. All of our judges are elected on six-year terms. And during um, the election time for them, and they're, they're kind of offset so that you're never electing four new judges all at one time. Uh, but the elections are also uh, not politically affiliated as far as judge uh, or judicial candidates. So they don't declare a party that they are running under. It's nonpartisan. So that's interesting. But the district court judges are split into um, the downstairs courts. So we have Judge Jeffrey Middleton in one and Judge Robert Pattison in the other. So uh, Judge Pattison handles half about half of the felony district preliminary examinations and the uh, preliminary uh, conferences that go with those the week before. So the judges usually rotate on a week to week basis with those. Um, Judge Pattison also handles about half of the misdemeanor cases uh, for criminal. So uh, again, we have every first and third Friday of the month is generally our heavy pretrial day with attorney pretrials. And um, the judges rotate again who handles the pretrials on those days. So if there's a plea that's being entered or something, uh, one of the district court judges would handle that. They handle the plea, the sentencing, any probation violations for those misdemeanors, uh, all of those things. Judge Pattison, though, is cross assigned as a circuit court judge for um, divorce and custody cases. So these would be any paternity actions, any um, divorces with minor children and then custody cases obviously involving minor children. So that's a bit different than some courts. Some courts have just their circuit court judge who is elected that does all of those. So our county is a little bit different, splitting those up between uh, Judge Pattison as the elected district court judge, cross assigned to circuit court, and the circuit court judge Stutzman, who I'll get to in a minute. Going back to Judge Middleton, the other elected district court judge, Instead of the um, divorce and custody type stuff, like what Judge Pattison does, he does all of the small claims in landlord, tenant, and general civil cases. The, in Michigan, general civil cases are split into district court general civil or circuit court general civil, and that is by the amount of damages that are claimed. So if it's under $25,000 and it's a general civil case like a contract that somebody breached or that sort of thing, uh, then Judge Middleton would handle that case. Small claims is a division of the court, kind of like what you'd see like with Judge Judy or <laughs> Judge Wapner. I mean, I'm going, dating myself a little there, but um, small claims is the type of court where there are no attorneys involved. And that's kind of the beauty of it is it's like the people's court. I guess that's, yeah, Judge Wapner maybe, people's court. Anyway, um, if you have a claim that is under, I believe it's $5,500 is the maximum amount of damages, or you're willing to limit your damages to under $5,500, you can file a small claims action and Judge Middleton is the one that handles those. So those also have different you know, pre-trials and mediations that are assigned for those. Uh, landlord tenant, like you see, is basically rental and real property law. Uh, he also handles like land contract forfeitures. If there's um, an issue with a land contract that somebody's purchasing a piece of real estate, they stop paying, he would handle those. Okay. And then, of course, he handles like the other half of the um, misdemeanor criminal law and uh, preliminary exam conferences and preliminary exams. 
So then moving upstairs, we have Judge Paul Stutzman, and he handles all the circuit court matters. So again, he is the elected circuit court judge, but Judge Pattison is cross-assigned to handle those divorce and custody cases with minor children. Judge Stutzman, though, handles all divorces with no minor children. So if it's a couple that never had children or they didn't adopt any children that are still minors um, or... I guess as long as there's no minor children, I guess I'll say so. There can be adult children. He handles the case. So his is more of a divorces with property issues, um, dissolution of marriage uh, without minor kids. He also handles all of the like medical malpractice or general civil cases that are over $25,000 in damages. Um, so it could be all sorts of different types of cases that he handles on a daily basis. He, of course, then also handles the felony criminal cases. So those would be like after it gets to the preliminary exam stage downstairs where the, the defendant either waives the preliminary exam or they uh, have the preliminary exam and are found that there's probable cause to bind them over into circuit court where all felonies are dealt with. That's when it transfers to Judge Dutzman's court. So Judge Stutzman um, handles everything from there on out with the felony criminal cases. Uh, he also does handle some of the misdemeanors. If it's a case that goes upstairs, it's bound over into circuit court, but then it resolves with a misdemeanor plea, it doesn't get sent back down or remanded like it used to do. Uh, it stays with him in his circuit court. He does the uh, plea sentencing and then any issues with um, post-conviction relief. He also is the court that gets appealed to if somebody appeals uh, a decision of one of the district court judges. So for example, if the district court judge makes a ruling and the attorney or the prosecutor disagrees with it, they can appeal it to uh, the circuit court and Judge Stutzman would hear the case uh, just on that appeal, not the case completely unless it gets bound over there. Then we have the probate judge. The probate judge currently is David Tomlinson, and the probate judge is unique because it's the only one that's created for each county. So in some states, there are um, the probate process is handled by a different set of judges or courts, but in ours, it's a very unique situation. The probate judge is like your true county judge. Back in the day, they used to be appointed by the governor, but it is done um, pursuant to a regular election now. Peggy, thanks for my, my gym fund. Yay. Yes. Trying to get a gym for my kids in colon. Anyway, so the probate uh, court, what is that? Well, it's it's not probation. I mean, people tend to be confused about probate versus probation, two totally separate things. The probate court is generally for your uh, estates, trusts, that sort of thing. So if somebody deceases and they left a will that says where they want their stuff to go and who they want to be in charge, they would uh, have a probate estate that is opened in the probate court in the county where they were domiciled when they died. So that's one of the, the things that they do. The other thing is our probate court is also cross assigned as a circuit court. So the probate court handles all of the adoptions and guardianships, whether it's for minors um, or for adults, uh, developmentally disabled um, individuals, all of those types and conservatorships, those are all handled through the probate court. The other thing that is huge that they handle uh, are the abuse neglect cases. And I can kind of get into those later, but basically if you have child protective services that files a petition to remove a child or children from the home, the probate court is the court that handles that from the removal all the way through termination of parental rights or reunification of the family uh, if that is warranted in the case. So that's basically it for all of the courts. Um, again, all of them are cross assigned to the extent that if there is some sort of a issue with the somebody, there's some conflict of interest or whatever it might be, and the judge needs to recuse or disqualify from it, uh, there are opportunities for the other judges to handle the case. So Judge Pattison has handled probate cases before. Um, judge Middleton has handled uh, circuit court cases before. It's kind of um, Judge Tomlinson practiced a long time in family law. So if there's a divorce with minor children case, it generally is going to conflict to him. And then all four judges do handle, uh, at times, personal protection orders, which would be the issuance of the personal protection order. And uh, once it is issued, if there are any violations or requests to terminate, things like that. 
So with that, I'll kind of scroll through and see if there are any questions. Let's see. Going back to the top. It's nice to see everybody in here, of course. Retired Rogue Dog, Amanda. Holy cow, I've got all these things popping up while I'm trying to scroll through. Okay, and Nick Jarhead Goats. How are my goats doing? Well, they are doing well, thank you. Nobody has given birth yet. I'm just still waiting on that. And let's see. Three courts in St. Joseph County. Well, and the reason why you wouldn't normally see a uh, probate court is <laughs> Judge Middleton's court, the court of a public opinion, and the food court. We don't have a food court. I would like a food court. But when everybody was doing Zoom court, which would be like summer of 2020, kind of through 2021 a little bit, probate court is one that often would not be uh, publicly held only because when you're dealing with children and psychological evaluations of people and things like that, there are certain rules that the probate court has that they can close their courtroom maybe more easily than the other courts can, uh, justifying it by the protection of those children. Okay. And totally unknowable, <laughs> the weird effect of the blue green screen. I know, right? It's not perfect, but we're getting there. Hello, brutal Bob. Let's see, yes, Judge Middleton would have a, an interesting affiliation, I'm sure. And he is the GOAT, that is true. Judge M seems more laid back than Judge Stutzman. How much of this is in subject matter? Um, you know, obviously felonies are more serious than misdemeanors. So when the stakes are higher, people are looking at potential prison time versus in district court. I mean, the worst that's going to happen is they could go to jail for a year, be put on probation for a couple of years, that sort of thing. So I think that does kind of give Judge Middleton maybe more leeway to make things more lighthearted uh, at times. But uh, Judge Stutzman obviously uh, has some very serious cases, and we never want to make it appear that we don't care about what's happening i mean for the defendant or the victims or any of the witnesses for that matter we do take it very seriously so the judge of stutzman is really fun too so i mean he's definitely got a fun personality all right ban that account above it's a spam bot Ooh, can i ban them block them sure i just blocked them i don't really know what that will help me but hopefully all right, Judge Middleton has his power to sentence up to one year, whereas Judge Stutzman sentenced a few up to 15 years a few times, yes. So um, Judge Stutzman actually can sentence for anything. Uh, felonies are certain felonies that are life with no opportunity for parole, and we have had a few of those recently. And there are also life or any term of years, which he can set that term. Um, if you've watched my felony sentencing tutorial, it kind of talks about sentencing guidelines and how those are arranged. But Judge Stutzman has the power to choose the starting point for when that person would be eligible for parole for the first time and the ending point. So if they are paroled, but maybe there is some sort of issue, a violation on parole, and they go back to the Department of Corrections, that tail end that Judge Stutzman sets is the longest amount of time that the Department of Corrections could keep flopping that person and keeping them incarcerated. And a lot of times you'll see that that is a very large gap. So say it's a 15 year minimum, so they've uh, up to 40 years. So they would serve that 15 year minimum that judge set at 15 years, they could apply to get out on parole if they get approved, okay, they're out, but there's still that 40 year tail hanging in there. And if they were to get in trouble on parole, like a year or two of parole, they could get sent back to DOC and then flopped continually until the entire 40 years have run. Okay, judge had quite an excruciating <laughs> bench trial. Uh, yes, I'm glad I didn't have to be there for that. I had not seen that. I was in uh, my office working, so I'll have to check that out. We had actually a criminal bench trial set this morning. It ended up settling, uh, so we did not have that one. <laughs> Is it big time when I get chat bots? I don't know. 
When did I do landlord matters? Yes, I did do landlord tenant matters when I was in private practice. I would say fairly regularly. Um, you know, if there's clients of mine that had a rental unit and needed to evict somebody, I would say pretty frequently we were doing that. Obviously, when COVID occurred, that's kind of when I slowed down significantly in my private practice and came to the prosecutor's office part time. Um, but it also really negatively impacted the ability for landlords to get uh, eviction orders on their tenants. Um, so that is finally kind of turning around now. So if you see judge making mention of the you know, COVID issues coming through and now we're getting all these landlord tenant cases, that's because for about a year and a half, it was nearly impossible to get somebody evicted. And a lot of landlords, um, it's not their full-time job. It's maybe a house that they inherited from a family member that they didn't want to sell. They're using it as a second stream of income, uh, especially if that relative left it with a mortgage on it and the uh, family member has to pay the mortgage. They were renting it out in order to help pay that second mortgage and keep that house. So when COVID occurred and people stopped paying, uh, it became very difficult because now that other family, the owner of the house, had to pay not only their own mortgage and bills, but also then um, the one on the rental house. Off topic, Lightfoot, the new babies are very good. The little sheep are growing. They are super duper cute. How does the number of courts in St. Joe County compare to larger population counties? You'll notice like Wayne County, which is one of the obviously heavily populated counties over by the Detroit area, they have a ton of district court judges and circuit court judges. So if you're looking at counties around us, we are one of the few that has a split district court. I think we're very fortunate to have two district court judges. Um, you know, if you're looking at like Cass County or Branch County, which are directly on either side of us and more comparable in size, they do not. They have one district court judge, one probate court judge, and one circuit court judge. Okay. Secret Squirrel, I do need some mods on here. I'm sorry. I have my, my sister approved to be one, but I didn't tell her I was doing a live stream. I kind of threw this together last minute. All right, WDWLTV, thanks for coming in. I don't know your real name. Goosebumps, just leaving a message. Okay, <laughs> gave him the option for the bench trial. Oh gosh, I'm going to have to see what that bench trial was. Okay, would I like to appear? I don't know that judge, Mary Krasinowski. Kris I'm not sure who that is, but I should check him out. Oh, it was a TJ Reed case. Oh, goodness. If you've seen some of the other ones, TJ and I have known him since we were kids. So it is always kind of entertaining to see him go into lawyer mode and um, handle those things. Daniel Torrance, thank you for the super sticker. That was sweet of you. All right. Colleen, if it ran to almost 530, I would not doubt it. <laughs> it ran to almost 530. We, um, Back in the day, it used to be kind of common, especially in abuse and neglect court uh, with the prior judge that was on the bench, that we would be here until 5.30 or 6 trying to finish cases on a Thursday. So definitely, uh, we once security got tightened around here and security needs to leave at 5, uh, we were kind of forced into making sure that our cases get done by 5 o'clock every day. All right, Tom, if you as a prosecutor realize you no longer have enough evidence to secure a conviction, do you have a professional responsibility to drop the case? Uh, I would say yes. Ethically, we are not to um, go forward with a case that we don't believe that we have the ability to secure a conviction. And again, this is one of those really difficult things as a prosecutor uh, or as an attorney or a human in general, right? If you truly believe that something happened, but you don't have the ability to prove it to the standard that's required, it's very difficult, especially if you're talking about like the criminal sexual conduct case or something where there was a person that was physically injured uh, or emotionally damaged or had property damage that they would like to have some sort of restitution for. It is very difficult to look at them and say, look, I, I, I'm certain that this happened to you and I'm sorry, we just don't have the ability to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest standard of the law. Now with probation violations, um, 
those are not a beyond a reasonable doubt standard. Those are just like a preponderance of the evidence, like a more likely than not that it occurred. So we have an easier burden to meet with those. But in a criminal case, the initial criminal case, it's a beyond a reasonable doubt standard. Okay. Uh, let's see. Judge M, okay, so Joe, Judge M sometimes makes comments about not being able to do spot pretrials during arrest. Oh, like an instant, <laughs> an instant pretrial. Oh, the instant pretrials are coming back to haunt me. Um, yeah, so the reason for not doing them right off is more of a time efficiency issue, but also a lack of having the information to effectively do it. So if it's a traffic ticket that was written at the roadside and the person came in um, about 10 days after the ticket, like the ticket has a date on it that they have to come for their arraignment. So unless they just pay the ticket um, or that sort of thing, they have to come in and the judge says, here's what you're charged with. How do you plead? All right. So the law requires that they have this arraignment. And if they plead not guilty, then ideally, yes, we would be there and I would be up to speed and know exactly what is going on with the case. I'd have a copy of the police report if there is one, a copy of the video, a copy of their driving history, all of those things. Unfortunately, the way that the system works currently is when the officer writes that ticket and it goes automatically to the district court through the, the interwebs, right, uh, it doesn't automatically come to the prosecutor's office. So that's why sometimes if somebody gets a traffic ticket, we never even see it. The officer writes the ticket, they pay it or take responsibility. Not, not an issue. I never have a file on it. So when people come in and it's not a an arraignment on a case that we looked at a warrant request and we as the prosecutor's office authorized that, then we've never laid eyes on it. So getting that information in a five minute span is not always very easy. So that's kind of the background on why the instant pretrials became dead in the water for a while. We are trying to work around that and make it better for all parties involved. Uh, so we're hoping to have a resolution to that soon. Dale. Okay. Dale, now that I remember your name, I'll try to remember it in the future too. So thanks for coming. Sparky, your head is still spinning. You guys are like killing me with this. I'm going to have to go watch this case now. I want to go home and not work on cases, right? But I guess I can take a look at it. Cece, hello from San Diego. Never have been there. Would love to go and go to the zoo there. Goosebump, you're one of Natalie's mods. I may have to make you a mod for me. Gary M. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you don't have real names. You live in YouTube. I know that's what's so hard. It's like I want to thank people and say, like, wait, but it's your name is awkward to say out loud. Okay. TJ is very aggressive when he feels he's correct. I mean, that's like a nail, hitting the nail on the head. Jake, good work. Oh, Kim Blandino. I did see something that Law Talk with Mike had posted on that and that poor court appointed attorney and having to manage a very aggressive client. I, I've been there. It's, it's been tough. Dale, I saw your name. Sorry, I'm very slow at going through these. Okay. And TJ does think he's right all the time. That's funny. Jake, are you actually like one of our friends? Are you like moonlighting in here and pretending you're catfishing me? Because I feel like you must know, TJ. Oh, so yelling it out. Get you. Do, 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 do. Yeah, hit that like button. Thanks, Arrow Scout. Appreciate that. Do you guys have any questions? The grumpy old man. I'm going to have to look up your YouTube. That sounds like something I might like. Mayberry and middle, yeah, best friend. Oh, it's so hard when there's these landlord tenant evictions. You know, somebody asked about landlord tenant cases. I can probably do a live stream on that maybe, maybe tomorrow or something. Let's see how I feel about it. Captain Cactus, are you a bot? Who's the bot? You tell me who the bot is and I'll block him. Okay. Don't subject yourself to the torture. <laughs> but now I have to because you're all talking about it. Must have been really good. 
beware of falling iguanas. That must mean it's going to be cold, right? Because when it gets cold, the iguanas like they fall off. Yes, Schrodinger's cat passed away. I believe his real name is Cliff Oldy. And unfortunately, I didn't get to work with him much on these sorts of things. But I do enjoy his videos and feel very sad um, for his, his family. That's heartbreaking. He was very, very young. Um, so I haven't heard any updates on uh, that situation, but certainly my heart goes out to the family with that. Cass, don't you dare say that TJ is usually right. It's very dangerous and that will get to his head and he won't fit through a doorway. Okay, what happens when a case gets suppressed? Um, that's kind of a weird terminology. I guess there's suppression to us is like if a, a there's a motion for suppression, which typically deals with like a piece of evidence. And suppression motions are generally handled in the circuit court for criminal cases, but if it's a misdemeanor case, there can be a motion for suppression. Uh, I don't know if months ago Judge Patterson had a suppression motion on a DUI case, uh, drunk driving. And he did his um, order, uh, basically orally, gave his decision. And so if you listen to that, uh, it certainly had a lot of information about suppression. So if in that situation, if a piece of evidence is suppressed, uh, if it was a crucial piece of evidence uh, that we no longer have the ability to use, it, it could mean that the case then gets dismissed because of lack of evidence to follow through and meet that beyond a reasonable doubt standard. If you're talking about like a case being, um, you say suppressed, maybe taken off of somebody's criminal history, that's more, uh, we call that an expungement or a set aside. So that is done through a petition to the court, uh, laying out the statutory background and guidelines for the type of case that it is, why it should be uh, set aside and what you've done to basically give you um, the privilege to have it set aside. So I have had a lot more set aside cases recently because the law has changed and made it uh, easier for people to set aside convictions, both uh, misdemeanor and felony. There are certain things you can't set aside, uh, very serious uh, criminal sexual conduct cases. Uh, drinking and driving cases used to be where you could not set them aside, but there are certain exceptions that are coming down where if it is a first offense and you don't have any others, I believe that is coming up soon where you can set those aside. Okay. Oh, there's a memorial tonight for Schrodinger's cat. So hopefully everybody goes to that. Charlene from Louisiana. Love New Orleans. One of my favorite cities. I do not take the goats to the city down for a smorgasbord. That's pretty funny though. Um, they might like that, but we don't really have a city dump. Oh, yes, uh, Blandino is trying to delay justice, it, it would seem. Any tips for a pending goat custody case? <laughs> I mean, goats are personal property, so I guess it would just be like any other personal property case. Um, sure, I'd, if there really was a case, I'd love to hear about it, actually. Squirrel, I might have to make you a mod. I think I can do that. No, I can't. Did I put a star on you? What does it do when I put a star on you? Got you a star upon there. I don't know what it does, but there you are. Do you watch yourself back on the judge's YouTube channel? At times I do because I'm like, did I really make that face or did I really roll my eyes? And generally I did, but um, yeah. Has that video is about fence disputes between neighbors. Oh man, fence and property line disputes are rough ones. Um, again, this goes back to like real property law and getting surveys. If you watched my video on deeds the other day, I kind of touched on pro uh, property line disputes, boundary line disputes, and getting a survey and getting the markers uh, verified so that you know where you're putting your fence. We've had people had to rip down fences before um, with zoning laws. We've had people that put up like an accessory building that was two stories high and it had to be ripped down because it only allowed for one story high accessory buildings. It was near a lake. 
you'll generally find most of those deed restrictions around lake properties. Oh, TJ. TJ's just trying to compete with me with the faces, I guess. I don't know. I really do have to go watch this one now. Okay, so criminal expungements. Once, if you <clears throat> successfully, correctly expunge or set aside a criminal conviction, it should not show up on a third party background check or criminal databases, media sources. I mean, obviously, if it was a high profile case that had media coverage from newspapers or magazines or whatever, TV news, you can't go and force them to take all that stuff down. So I guess to an extent, your conviction may come back to haunt you, but in the criminal justice realm, it would not if you have it properly set aside. You like that fancy background? I made it using like snip and sketch. Yeah, I know, I'm very fancy. Okay, hello, David Bradner. Nice to see you. And Judge Aquiline had a lot of suppressed cases on her docket today. Like suppression motions or set asides? I'm not really sure. You're having a party here when I hit. Sure, what well, party at my house if I hit 100,000 subs, right? Oh, I have a background in my house. I was going to use that. Maybe if I can switch it while I'm on here. We'll see. I was messing around with my virtual backgrounds, trying to find one that I thought would be reasonable. And I thought this one was fun. This is my house. And if I move to the side, look, it says RIP to my 30s. That was um, the night of my 40th birthday party. My family surprised me and my friends and family, I should say. Um, so I left that banner up for quite a while. I don't honestly know what happened to it. I think my husband took it down because I mean, not like I need it anymore. But the other one that I had as my background, switch it real quick. One of my favorites is my barn. Look how pretty that is, right? Like that little yard right there is where the goats hang out. And the chickens like all crawl around, like, you know, over by where the garage door entry to the barn is. They peck and scratch and do cute stuff. And then the other one that I had was, do do do. My backyard. Look, see, there's a lake back there. And the sun is like pretty and yeah. So anyway, that was fun. That's our like really old picnic table down there, but it's fun. All right, let's see if there's any other comments. My morning starts at seven. I do need to do that. Yeah, Captain Cactus, you tell those people, 75 people watching with only 60 likes, jeez. Brandon, what is Judge Milton like out of the courtroom? He is really funny and an amazing trivia partner. Like if you have a trivia contest, he's like money. You got to have him on your team. Okay. What do we end up naming the baby lambs? Um, <laughs> the kids ended up naming them Pepper and Pumpkin. So they're skiing so far, Pepper and Pumpkin. Um, they have not chosen who gets to show which one at the fair yet. I think my oldest son is holding out to see which ones fill out the best and have the best uh, body confirmation. So we'll see. Is it a good or bad idea to represent family and friends? Oof, Jake, that's a rough one. Um, I have over the years represented hundreds of, of family and friends, right? Like it's you feel an obligation to, and it's only really bitten me in the rear end a few times. Um, and I'll just kind of leave it at that. In general, if you can separate your emotional connection with the legal pragmatic connection, both you and your client need to be able to do that. Uh, you definitely can successfully represent them. What do your kids think of me being on YouTube professionally and privately? Oh, that's so funny. Um, I don't know what they really think about it. Um, I think they like it, you know, it's, of fun. I'm definitely not what they typically watch. They like to watch gamers and like people playing Fortnite and Minecraft and clearly I don't do that. But I think they think it's pretty cool. Thanks Colleen. I think my faces are better than TJ's too, but I like his wife a lot so I'll, I'll let him have a little bit of fun and fame too, right? 
Oh, big white Pyrenees dogs for livestock watching. Yes, my husband will probably have a heart attack if I brought him a dog, though. It's kind of one of those things, right? I can bring him to emu, but like he wasn't super thrilled about that either. But a dog would probably put him over the edge. I don't want to do my own divorce, so we're just going to keep it easy peasy. Nimrod, thanks for joining. Nice to see you. Jake, uh, you've seen the judge or prosecutor mentioning a defendant's issues in other counties in the current case. Has it ever become a jurisdiction issue? No, I mean, sometimes there's an issue where, depending which case came first, maybe we want, or the severity of the cases and that that matter, maybe we want that other jurisdiction to come get the person and resolve that case before we go into getting ours resolved, uh, but not like jurisdiction as in something that happened in our county uh, is going to be prosecuted in our county and same with theirs. There are multi-jurisdictional issues at times where if something happens, it starts out in our county and maybe it's a fleeing and eluding where they're um, like a police chase, right? If they flee and elude from St. Joseph County and they drive up into Kalamazoo County and then come back into St. Joe County and maybe drive east into Branch County, the person could be charged in each of those three jurisdictions. And so then it becomes, is it worth it to all three to um, file cases that are all kind of based on the same incident? Um, so there are times where, you know, we look at who, who had most of the things happen in their county and maybe handle it there. And because we are a border county with having Indiana directly on the edge of our county on the south side, we do have times where Elkar, or I'm sorry, LaGrange, um, that they like chase people into our county or we chase people into their county and we have to deal with those multi-state jurisdictional issues. There is a statute that allows for um, our jurisdiction to charge if it happens within a mile of the county line or state line in our county. So we've had that come up one time. I mean, one time when I've been here, I don't know if it's come up before. Infamous climate. <laughs> now you have to watch every goat video. I don't get a bunch of goat videos. I want extra goat videos. They don't ever recommend them for me. Okay, thank you, Goose. I'm gonna like switch to the last 30 minutes of that landlord tenant case and we'll go from there. Oh, fancy house. I mean, I like it. I work really hard on the landscaping and the plants and stuff. So I thought it was a good picture. It made me happy. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you. I can't take credit for the style and building of the house. Our friends built it. Um, but the wife uh, of the couple was from Alabama. So it definitely has that Southern vibe. Um, and then the other side is like a different style. So kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, the lighting, like, you know, those iPhones, man, you can take some cool pictures, even if it's at night. I need a flagpole at the barn. We have a flagpole in front of the house. So I haven't put a flagpole in, in front of the barn yet. But I feel like I need something on the barn to decorate it. It just looks kind of plain, right? Like, I need like a, I don't know, like, a, like people put those stars or things like that. But everybody has one of those. I want something different. So if anybody's got any design ideas, I think of things that, like in my head, but never quite like can put them together. Same with inside our house. Like it's still a lot of bare walls because my husband has ideas about decorating what he wants and I have mine. He likes a lot of beer heads. I'm like, eh, they're great for some places, but not exactly everywhere in the house. So we've tried hiring um, some people to help with design, but it did not work out. So back to square one. Judge Bruin, a woman was assaulted on Zoom. I think I'm not sure if this, I'm assuming that's the same one that I saw on Reddit the other night. And holy cow, I, I don't want to, you know, throw shade at the judge by any means. Um, but I just felt like if, if that person, which I think ended up being the woman's brother, was willing to assault her, like, live in front of the court on Zoom, maybe he didn't know he was on camera, I don't know. But um, she didn't seem super bothered by it, which almost scares me more, like this is a regular occurrence. Uh, so I'm certainly glad that the uh, female attorney that came on later in the call uh, had the 
wherewithal to say, look, I think maybe we should send somebody to check on her. Um, certainly, hopefully everything is okay and somebody got there to check on her. That's my yard, yes. Again, I can't really take credit for how cute the yard is. Um, the people that built the house um, cleaned up that property and it took like years of them working on uh, the property. Oh yeah, there are deer in there. I think that's why I took the picture actually, if you see the deer kind of by my head. Um, but we do have deer that come by. There's a fox, which I think ate my ducks. So I'm not super thrilled about the fox, but nature, right? Okay. Oh, I know. So we live on 10 acres. So it's like the house is kind of in the middle. So this is the, I don't know, they call the backyard or the front yard. Lake front houses, I think it's like technically the lake side is your front yard, which just seems weird to me. Is the DACA available to the public daily? Daniel, I believe that if you go on to the St. Joseph County website, you can get the docket. The funky, yeah, you like that? It's because I have a, I don't have a green screen. Like, who has a green screen in real life? So it's just, it makes it look all weird. Sorry. Okay, yes, Judge knows his music, that is for sure. No, I'm not a zillionaire. Barstool trivia. All right, Roz, thanks. I love that you love the names. Luke is one of the best of trivia. Oh, Luke, he is fun, Joe. He's, he also is a good trivia partner. Yes. And Don, definitely re uh, representing family and friends, he is risky. Because um, if things don't go the way that you believe they should and they believe they should, uh, or it, it goes the way that, you know, it should, but they're unhappy about it, yeah, it can ruin friendships pepper and spice, you know, there's always the chance that there, there should be a few more babies and maybe there will be a spice like pepper, pumpkin spice, be kind of fun. I'm never going to forget you guys. I'm not really going to become like a, a YouTube star people. Let's not get crazy. I mean, this is just fun though. I do like it. Okay. Big horn alpacas. Ooh, that's cool. I don't see T-Bone in here. If anybody ever sees T-Bone, I wanted to thank him. Obviously, I will thank him through some sort of a written correspondence. But um, the other day he had given um, like a super chat, which was really cool. Thank you. But he sent me a package and I opened it last night. And I kid you not, it was one of the most thoughtful, coolest things ever. He had a set of shears. So like the big electronic or electronic, Jesus, electric um, clippers that I was using in my video of shearing a sheep. And uh, what he didn't know is that my sister and I share those. So it is a real pain because between the two of us, we generally have like 10 sheep that need to be sheared around fair time. And we have to kind of coordinate like who can use clippers today because they're quite expensive. And I opened up this package and that sweet man had sent me a pair of his shears um, that he said they've been sitting in his garage for 10 years, but they'd never been used. And it was honestly the most thoughtful thing that somebody has done for me in a very long time. So T-Bone, you are the bomb. Thank you so much. I am like ridiculously excited to use those shears. Can't share anything right now because of the time of year, but it is, is going to be very helpful um, for my kids and I for 4-H. So thank you. Do I take offense if people use the word goat in so many bad ways except Tom Brady? I mean, no, I don't take offense. I'm very hard to offend, honestly. But Tom Brady is the goat, man. My middle son just loves Tom Brady. Loves the fact that he's a University of Michigan guy. He then was like a huge Patriots fan because Tom was obviously there. And then a Buccaneers fan. So definitely we love ourselves and Tom Brady. I follow him on TikTok. But I mean, I don't think he knows who I am and that's okay. But definitely he's a goat. I can handle that. Courtroom working well with virtual court. What is the most difficult? Oh, I mean, it definitely has its difficulties, but, um, and I think we've worked it out pretty well, other than people not being present and doing or wearing things that they shouldn't in court. 
Okay. Surprised by bats in the winter. Oh, I suppose there's like bats year round, but maybe that's why that one was dead because it is winter. Um, anyway, I did get it out of the fireplace, so no worries there. All right, Roz, you're there. Oh, thanks. I mean, I, I always joke with my friends that I identify as a 26 year old, so we're just going to go with that. Okay. Reaction. Do you want me to do reaction videos? I know. I just, I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there technologically. I think pretty soon I'll be able to figure it out. I do have concerns about, um, you know, and nothing from Michigan, obviously. So, but other than that, I could probably figure something out for us. Okay. Big horn pack. I think that would be really cool, actually. What do I do with the wool that I share? By the time I have to share them, there's not like that massive amount of wool. That's when we use like that guy that doesn't professionally for like two dollars and fifty cents a sheep. And honestly, I would I don't mind paying that when it's um, you know ninety degrees out and we need to get them sheared quickly. And he can do it in a few minutes flat. Uh, but when I have to do it, and it has to be like you know, show quality shearing, their wool is usually only like maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half. It's not a ton. So I do save some of the wool for um, some clients that do those little felties, like the little, I don't know, like little animals that they make out of wool, or um, they use it to like accent their crafts that they make. So other than that, it gets thrown away and that probably is a terrible thing. Okay. A name for a dove? Oh, I don't know. I love naming things, so it is fun. Okay. Can judge and post fines for not showing up for court? I mean, I guess you could because it is contempt. Um, but usually it's just like a bench warrant and you get picked up and then you get arraigned and you get out and then you come the next time or you get arrested again, which is no fun. Do I have Zoom chat going during hearings? Um, not with Judge Middleton. Uh, there is not a Zoom chat turned on for him. Uh, so like people that are within the hearing, you can't send messages to. But in Judge Pattison's court, uh, last I knew, he had the chat function turned on. So occasionally we will send messages uh, to the attorneys or witnesses, if it's our witness, whatever. Um, but I don't believe... I guess I've never looked to see if Judge Sussman has it on. I'll pay attention next time. Hello, NF Cat from Newfoundland. Is that how you say Newfoundland? What minor crimes do you see as more serious in nature and which major crimes you think are less serious? You know, minor crimes that kind of drive me batty how little penalty there is uh, would be the moving violation causing serious impairment or moving uh, violation causing death. Um, those are like 93 day or one year max, uh, which is, I guess, kind of crazy. And then like fleeing and eluding, I would think would be worse. I mean, you watch these police chase videos and the number of people that are put in danger of property damage or a loss of life or serious injury is very significant. I mean, there was a police chase the other day that it actually stopped being a police chase. From what I understand, that it was a, a person on a motorcycle, but he um, continued to go 100 miles an hour through packed city streets and the helicopter was still following, um, but the on the ground officers had ceased following and he crashed into a vehicle and, and died from it. So, you know, that could have been avoided. Um, simply by facing music, pulling over. So what if it's like, okay, you're going to get a ticket for something and people just freak out and make their lives significantly worse. And thinking about the person that that motorcyclist hit, uh, I don't know the extent, if any, of injuries that that person sustained, but whether or not they have physical injuries, the emotional impact of that, I think would be very difficult to deal with. So I feel like fleeing and eluding should be um, a little more serious than, than what it is treated. As far as ones that I think maybe should be less serious, I can't think of any offhand, but I mean, that is an interesting question. 
Will you understand? Yeah, I mean, the judge has a choice to put his channel up or take it down, and I supported him with whatever he thought was right. So um, whatever he decides to do, he can do. And, you know, it, it's not going to affect how we do business here. And so for me, whether he does it or, or doesn't do it, you know, we just kind of keep plugging along, doing our cases. Has Judge ever not accepted a plea deal? Ooh, I feel like there was, I mean, I know Judge Stutzman has rejected plea deals. I wouldn't say regularly, but definitely there are some um, where it was maybe a, a, a no jail recommendation or a local jail recommendation. And the judge said, no, I'm not going to accept that. But if that happens, generally Judge Stutzman will tell the person, all right, I'm not going to... Um, go with that. But if you continue and I sentence you, here's what I would give. So say it was a local jail sentence. He's like, no, I would give you 18 months to five years in Department of Corrections. Go talk to your attorney and see if it's something you want to go through with or if you want to withdraw your plea and go to trial. Okay. I don't know how to knit. I guess if I knew how to knit or spin, maybe I would save more of the wool. Me. Oh, thanks for staying up for the late nights to watch this. Um, Natalie, I think that Natalie and I are going to do some sort of a collaboration. So that would be interesting. Um, I've watched hers here and there. I mean, she was pretty harsh on me on a few of them early on, but uh, hey, man, I can take it. I can take a good constructive criticism. So it'll be fun to do one with her. Would I ever get Judge Middleton on a live? I'm sure not while he is in office. So, hey, man, if we keep doing this for a few years and uh, he retires, I would love to have him on because he certainly is an interesting, interesting character on many fronts. And uh, he has been on a few of like the court cam and um, some things like that. So if you look around, you can find some interviews with him and it does give you some insight into his personality. So definitely worth it. Judge Patterson does do Zoom court. He does not stream his court um, on YouTube, though. So he, I guess if that makes sense. So there, people do appear by Zoom, but he does not do a live broadcast. He does occasionally do that. Um, if you look on like his channel, there are a couple things. He'll leave them up for a while. One of them was my case where it was a custody case and he wanted to give his opinion on it verbally uh, and make sure that we had time to listen to it and in order to be drafted based upon it. So uh, there are times where Judge Patterson does go live. Okay, neighborhood disputes. Holy cow. Yeah, don't it don't make it worse because I mean if you've got real property and you live next to each other, you can't just, you know, not see them, right? So those are ones that I'd like to see go through some sort of a mediation before it gets to the point of criminal charges for either side. Do I practice making faces in a mirror? No, but you like see yourself when you're on there and like catch your eye, you're like, oh shoot, I shouldn't have made that face or whatever. Why are repeat offenders given plea deals? Well, it's the same reason that anybody gets a plea deal. It depends on the facts of the case, the strength of our facts, the um, desires or lack thereof of our victims or our witnesses. It depends on judicial economy. If it's something where, you know, their prior offenses are not uh, as, you know, serious or something and yeah, it just, it, it depends on a lot of factors, I guess. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, getting late. Yes, secret scroll needs to curl up and get warm. That's funny. How do you keep your calm when court attorneys seem to be drawing it on? I feel bad for TJ. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just gotta take a deep breath and be like, look, this is just, everybody's getting heated. We all need to like take a deep breath, step back. Don't take things personally. Um, I was watching somebody's video the other night and the, I want to say the defense attorney maybe called the prosecutor a name or vice versa, whatever it was. And I thought, oh man, but the, the guy would not let it go. And for me, I'd be like, okay, you called me a crappy name, you know, really immature, but let it go. He was not letting it go. And I thought that just made things worse, honestly, in my opinion. 
So, but Jeffy's iPad, yes. You let your kids set up your devices and you're at their mercy. Letha May, nice to see you in here. Hopefully you're feeling good today. Okay. Mike, what is going on in here? Oh my gosh, it reminds me of like my kids are always like, what's going on here? And the guy says, breakfast. And then anyway, it just makes me laugh when anybody says what's going on here. Speaking of which, my darling child is calling in, probably wondering why I'm not home yet. I really thought this was going to be like a half an hour, but you guys are fun. So it's, it's been a good time. You've been growing a middle, <laughs> growing a middle 10 or 17 months. That is really funny. I should like screenshot that and send it to him. The littering trial. Hey, littering trial was not my circus, not my monkeys. So I'm taking no heat for that one. All right, Joe, thanks for coming in. Okay. Yes, like that people ask me all the time, do you want to be a judge? I mean, yeah, it's definitely in the cards. I, we talked about it. It's, you know, like it drives people nuts. Sometimes it's like, what's your plan? Like, I don't know. It's like day to day, man, do my thing. And I'm happy and my family's happy. So it's been good. But definitely if the opportunity arises, I, I feel like I would make a good judge and do well for our community. What drug do you recommend if all <laughs> only a legal one prescribed by a suitable doctor? But I know it's going to be depressing for people, right? If they don't get to see us, we need a Debbie emoji. There's like something that I can do to like make emojis or make special subscriptions for people. I got to figure this stuff out right now. It's like my part time gig, guys. I try. You'd like to see a trial of a sub sit, Ralph? Okay, thanks, buddy. You can come sit and law clerk for me on it, okay? But um, I'm sure you guys would enjoy it. But, oh, man, stress involved with that would be difficult. Michelle, thank you. I make it look easy. Well, sometimes, sometimes it is. Canada, thanks for coming, Shane. Do I ever dismiss because a cop messed up the arrest too bad? I mean, yes, Bob, there are times where it's like, ooh, ooh that's a fatal error and we're going to have to dismiss. Okay. Yes. Is it Aletha? Is that how you say it? Aletheia? I kind of want to see my sheeps. Okay. Let's see. All this person I brought to law school and I dropped out and um I don't know send Mike a link I know I should have I gotta get out of you guys like 57 minutes in but I super super appreciate you guys being here with me okay are you gonna see some goats not right this moment um but maybe soon maybe I can do a live if I get enough wi-fi at the barn yeah, if the Supreme Court's going to have a vacancy, humbly right, you just put you put in a good word for me. I mean, sure, why not? Yeah, the internet would like me to take over his script. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for your vote of confidence. Okay, Wednesday for the continuance. Oh, Wednesday is the continuance for today's at 9 a.m. You mean like the landlord-tenant case has a continuance? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, hey, Tom, you stop it. Casey and I had this talk about that littering trial, and I was like, it's yours, man. If you want to do it, you do it. And bless his heart, he gave it the old, good old college try, and I love Casey. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things. Any trolls? I mean, I'm sure there's trolls out there, right? Oh, thanks, Letha. And I'm glad that you are getting a little bit better hopefully it's been a rough day but today it can only get better right that's what they say okay guys i'm trying to roll through these quick all right you can look at the deer in the background yes aren't they so soothing they're so freaking cute sometimes we have babies and they like play in the water it's adorable but the house sits too far back for me to get like any really good videos because they'll run off, obviously, if we go down there. What does MFD stand for in front of a judge's, in front of an attorney name? I have no idea. 
oh, a subset in the UK that's covered by the US Constitution. That That's creative. That's nice. No, Ugh, Christoph, if you even suggest that Kim Blandina move to my jurisdiction, I'm going to ban you from my channel. <laughs> I can do that, right? Like, ban people. <laughs> I do have super nice fans. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Daytona, Florida. Oh, I love Daytona Beach area. That's very fun. Okay, guys, it's literally been an hour, and um, Christoph is threatening to, to recommend Kim Blandino move here. He's not welcome in my jurisdiction to me anyway. Uh, so I'm going to bounce out of here, but thank you. Thank you. A hundred viewers. Like that's kind of crazy. Thank you guys. Um, I hope to do this again soon. Maybe I'll come up with a really cool background again. I mean, my backyard's kind of fun, but, uh, maybe I'll get a green screen. I don't know. But anyway, it's been fun and you've heard what I've said. So if you have questions, you drop those in the comments. If you can get your friends to subscribe, that'd be cool too. Maybe your kids or grandkids or parents, you know, whoever. Uh, but it's been a really good time. So those of you that are out in other time zones, peace out. Good night. Get some good sleep. And I'll see you guys all soon.